Well, I knew, um, I'd known uh, John and Peter for quite a few years before Time Machines and also a few years before I joined Coil. We were, you know, very good friends and um, we'd, uh, we met in uh, London in the mid 80s, probably 86, something like 86, 87. And, uh, you know, we stayed friends, you know, we uh, uh, I th it was David Tibet that introduced us and um, you know we had a lot of common interests and we c before I joined Coil we collaborated on a couple of projects that you know that I wasn't really a full member of Coil and then I joined Coil as a full member in 1994 and then you know we did a couple of albums together we very much loved drone music. One of the things about Time Machines was the idea of, you know, like creating frequencies and timbres that caused you to uh, slip outside of time, you know, that felt that you went into some kind of other, other state. And, uh, you know, certain kinds of, kind of ritual music would do that, certain religious music, uh, both Western and non-Western. And uh, there was a piece of music by Nuss with Wind called Soliloquy for Lilith that was very important uh, to us. And I, um, I had uh, an MS-20 at my home studio and I was playing around, Korg MS-20 synthesizer, and I was playing around with it and caught this drone, just this weird frequency that had a powerfully psych coactive effect on me and uh, you know I recorded it on my DAT, my little portable DAT machine and uh, took it to Balance, John Balance and uh, Sleazy was out of uh, the house when I went to visit and I was like this might be what we're looking for and he you know he was like yeah that's exactly it so we took that and uh, started recording just right there and then creating these weird, you know, shifting frequencies. And then uh, over the course of however long we were, we didn't spend, a, we recorded over a course of a few days and, you know, hours and hours, many hours of uh, recordings got chopped down to what finally became Time Machines. When I first thought about uh, performing it live. It was the 20th anniversary of uh, Time Machines, of, of the creation of Time Machines, and it felt like a, a good opportunity to revisit it. It was something that I'd wanted to, not necessarily revisit Time Machines, but it was it felt like there was something more to be done with it. Uh, and then uh, Deus were reissuing it, on the twentieth anniversary, so I was like, you know, this could this could be a really great opportunity to, to take this and take it somewhere different. So I didn't want to do a literal, just basically do the the record literally. I wanted to give it new life and take it a, a different direction. You know, I'd always viewed time machines as a kind of you know as a living entity. So to me, it was okay. You know, it's twenty years later. You know what? You know. Where is this entity? You know what is what what has this entity been up to? And um, so I, I worked. I went upstate New York up to this uh, place that I have up in uh, the Catskill Mountains, and um, just lived with it for a couple of weeks. You know, in isolation, just you know, creating these drones and. There's bits of it that sound like Time Machines, but I think when people hear it, even though that there's a lot of it that's, com that's completely new, I think people feel that it's Time Machines, you know, that it captures the spirit, even though that it's, uh, uh, even though that some of the sounds, the methodologies and the equipment is different. Um, I think that it captures the essence of it. <laughs> 